Alright, so over on Mockrock, I just made a video talking about a full Ganondorf rework. I'm talking top to bottom, absolutely everything redone from scratch. And then a few months ago when I did the same thing for Link, PJiggles uploaded his Link remake video on the exact same day as mine, so I went through and reacted to that for this channel. This time around, no one did anything for Ganondorf on the same day, but you know what? It still sounds like fun. So, today what I've done is I've reached out to three creators who did the exact same thing that I did. Or at least relatively the same thing. I haven't seen any of these yet, I don't know exactly how they're formatted, but the core concept of just making a video talking about reworking Ganondorf is what we're looking at here. And we're just going to run through them all. You don't need to have seen my video certainly before you watch this one, but I'm probably going to be doing some contrasting and comparing and may give a few like additional insights into my thought process behind the main channel video. So you will probably get a bit more out of this one, but obviously my video is not the focus here. So not a huge deal. Let's get into it. Alright, so the first one I'm looking at here is from Delzithin, and just as a heads up, I'm skipping through huge portions of these. There's going to be a ton of missing nuance, and I'm probably going to be mostly editing out aesthetics and stuff like that, so if you take a look at one of these and you're like, man, that seems cool, I wish I could watch more of it, I got good news for you. Ganondorf is still tethered to Captain Falcon's moveset and still held back because of it. While working as a Falcon clone was the only reason he got into Melee, a whole lot of fans still feel he's not living up to his reputation, and they're left hoping the next Smash game will find the opportunity to remake his moveset into something more worthy. Yeah, I expect to hear more about this. Ganondorf got into Melee as a Captain Falcon clone, that's the only reason he made it in. The main problem with it is not the fact that he was added as a clone, it's that they refused to change him later. Let's give Ganondorf's Smash design a new incarnation that taps into more of his canon abilities and lore, while keeping the good parts of his current concept because it does have its fans, and give him something worthy of the bearer of the Triforce of Power. Okay, so as I kind of expected going in, this is not a complete and total overhaul. The vast majority of Ganondorf Ganondorf fan movesets that I've seen, I would say, take more of this approach where it's like, hey, people like Ganondorf, they just don't like all of them, so let's keep the stuff that works and discard the stuff that doesn't. Not at all what I did for my video, I find it way more fun to just go totally scorched earth, but yeah, overall this is a little bit more what I'm expecting to see today. What if Smash tapped into several of his appearances at once to create a single definitive design? This video uses his Hyrule Warriors render as an example of such a thing, but Smash would come up with an original design. This is just a good reference point. Yeah, just so there's no confusion that Delzathin is actually using Hyrule Warriors Ganondorf as the basis for the moveset here. Again, very different approach to mine. I just took all four core Ganondorf appearances from across the Zelda series, gave them an alternate palette each, and called it a day. But a more definitive look is the kind of thing that I could see Smash doing for sure. A not insignificant crowd has decried Ganondorf's current focus on hand-to-hand -hand combat with someone yeah, this is boring. a sword for more than just his Smash attacks, while also decrying every new sword fighter that gets in. Huh. I get the idea behind it, but we can do one better, because he's just as associated with a different weapon. Alright, Trident moveset. So, Ganondorf isn't actually really associated with a Trident at all. Ganon is. They're technically the same character though, so fair enough and it's definitely more distinct. I think Nintendo's probably firmly dictated that there should be a separation between Ganondorf and Ganon's weapons, but... I don't think you need to really worry about that for a video like this. Also worth noting, this was made before Tears of the Kingdom came out, so it's obviously not going to have any references there. And that's totally fine. The thing is, when I was sitting down to make my Ganondorf moveset, which did incorporate Tears of the Kingdom, he ended up with less Tears of the Kingdom influence in it than I thought he would. That boss battle has a lot of really cool stuff in it, you know, him permanently destroying your hearts, the health bar that extends way beyond where it should, it's definitely got its iconic moments. The actual core moveset that he uses though, it's cool, and it's big, and there are a couple of very standout moves that he does, but there wasn't all that much in the actual attacks themselves that became like an instant classic in my eyes. I made a few small but significant changes that should help his movement. Slightly faster run speed should help him approach, slightly improved air speed should also help. He's still rather slow in the air, but now he's a bit more capable of maneuvering during jumps and going over enemy attacks in order to punish them. So the air movement change is one that I made too, it just makes sense for a character who can literally fly. The ground movement, I actually took the exact opposite approach. I made him even slower to the point where he's the single slowest running character in the game. All a matter of perspective, in my case it's because I think slow and powerful is a classic that I wanted to stick to, and Ganondorf had way more far-reaching moves, and he had better burst movement tools and stuff like that. The thing is, yes, Ganondorf certainly can be perceived as slow in the Zelda series, but he's not always. It depends on which appearance you take. So you can really pick and choose. I don't think there's a right approach here. The biggest thing is a sizable buff to his walk speed. This gives him better- Oh, I like that. Yeah, if we're going for this footsie slash bruiser concept, especially on a character who's already on the slow end, I think a faster walk makes a lot of sense. I'm assuming that we're going to be getting a tipper mechanic with a trident. Yeah, this is cool. Ganondorf's jab is mostly similar to his current one, an open palm thrust with the hand that isn't holding the trident. Yeah, it's fine. Few 
key changes make it better. It comes out one frame faster, creates a burst of dark magic once his hand is fully extended for a bigger hitbox, and most importantly, it has more hit stun and less knockback growth with a more diagonal angle. Yep, it's a combo move at certain percents now, just like Roy's jab. And at high percents, it's a kill confirmed too. Absolutely 100% justified. Even speeding it up a frame, it's still one of the slowest jabs in the game. And Ganondorf's existing jab isn't bad by any means. I would put it in like the upper half of the jabs in the game for sure, but you can definitely go better. That seems totally fair considering how much you can struggle in close quarters. Ganondorf's forward tilt swaps the Leonidas kick for something more practical. Gripping his trident with one hand and stabbing forward. I did the exact same thing. Old forward tilt, a disjointed hitbox since it's using a weapon and not his body, and the option to angle it up or down, it's worth using in more situations. This being a blatantly spammable move, something like Sephiroth's forward tilt just makes so much sense. Sad to say it, I decided to ditch the volcano kick. Don't for be sad, that is such a stupid game. move, thank you. Cheese people. This new up tilt has him swing his trident upward from ground level, sort of a scoop motion that starts in front of him and stops diagonally up and behind him. It might sound weak, but it's surprisingly quick and works as a combo starter at low percents. This certainly sounds like a very good move, a massive disjointed combo starter, but okay. Characters are allowed to have good moves, and especially a character like this who's going to be bullied. Down tilt, I left as is. I want him to have some physical attacks still, and it already has surprising reach and power. While his new forward tilt is for spacing, this is for getting knockouts. Down tilt, uh, do I like down tilt being so low ranged on a trident character. Okay, so the thing is, this actually has a surprising canon basis. Ganondorf in the Wind Waker does deliver a low kick. There's no real set in stone pattern to forward tilts versus down tilts. Generally speaking, forward tilts are your reaching ones and down tilts are like your combo starters or general spacing and setup moves. That's kind of what's going on here. You know what? I had to think about this one for a bit, but at the end of the day, I think I like it. He's already got his big, dumb, ultra long range tools. There's room to do something else. I also left his dash attack alone, mostly. The full power tackle is already one of the best dash attacks in the game yep. when you account for how much you can do out of the late hit. The one thing I'd mess with is upgrading the visuals so a burst of dark lightning comes out as a hitbox does. Oh, that's cool. Really emphasize that power. Yeah, I didn't keep the shoulder charge in my moveset. I swapped it out for the elbow thrust that he does in Twilight Princess. But it took me a bit to decide on that. I do like the shoulder charge. It invokes the imagery of a charging boar just a little bit. It feels very appropriate for Ganondorf. It's a very good move. Hits hard. Yeah, no major complaints. For his forward smash, Ganondorf rears back, grips his trident with both hands, and performs a wickedly powerful stab that reaches far ahead, can be angled up or down, and is terrifyingly strong at the trident's tip. His previous forward smashes ripped off Falcon and Ike respectively, but this time he's stealing from Byleth. Yeah, I hate that we just need to compare every moveset like this to Byleth now. When I did the trident, which makes like a cameo appearance in one move, I decided to make it stand out a little bit more by giving it a tipper and then a real tipper one prong versus all three prongs connecting. This is the first move that I'm not totally in love with, and the main reason for that is just because it overlaps so much with his forward tilt. It's tricky though, right? Because if he's got a trident in his hand, it just makes so much sense to give him a forward tilt like what Delzeth and did. But then for his forward smash, wouldn't you also want to be using your really big, strong, long-range weapon? And again, it sounds like we are leaning into that direction of Ganondorf being a relatively straightforward, to-the-point character, so provided you really distinguish them visually, I don't think it's too outrageous compared to someone like Marth, for example, who does pretty similar moves for his jab, forward tilt, and forward smash, and it seems pretty justifiable because Marth is a straightforward sword fighter. If I'm putting myself in this hypothetical situation where I've chosen all of the same moves as Delzathin so far, and have used the the same approach of sort of a semi rework. I like the straightforwardness. I think the ultimate thing I would need to settle on is adding a lightning effect to it. Just really go out of your way to separate it from forward tilt. Don't worry, Ganondorf's new up smash is original. He quickly slams oh. the hilt of his trident against the ground, generating a small electric shockwave at his feet, then thrusts it upward as it conducts a blast of dark lightning. It's his fastest smash attack now if you count the first part, which launches people into the main hit above. Okay, so to be fair, that's a cool reference to Skyward Sword. It makes a lot of sense. This is a great up smash concept. I think personally that you could get away with it on both of them. You don't need to reserve it just for the up smash, but I get it. Ganondorf's down smash has him gather dark magic into his free hand and punch the ground with enough power to cause a semicircular dark explosion. If it sounds like it kills early, that's because it does. And it has enough range to his left and right to be a scary tech read. But the 
startup ain't that great, and it's not active for very long, so timing it right would be key. Yeah, I actually ended up going with an explosion for Down Smash 2. Mine is way more exaggerated. Mine is essentially his Warlock Punch replacement, and it had no Hyrule Warriors inspiration whatsoever. I blatantly stayed away from doing anything with Hyrule Warriors. It was just the core of my design philosophy, but even looking at the inspiration that Delzathin is going with here, this move that was taken from Hyrule Warriors, or at least is being shown as being from Hyrule Warriors, this itself is extracted from a move that Ganondorf does in Ocarina of Time, so I think there's definitely some good inspiration to work with there, and it makes a lot of sense for a down smash on a character like this. Alright, what about Ganondorf's aerials? We have a lot of changes here. Not as neutral air though, uh, that one I kept the same. Another move that's already really good at what it does, and it helps create relatively quick pressure and finish combos on this move set too. Neutral air is Ganondorf as he exists in Ultimate, right? If he didn't have neutral air, he, he's already the worst character in the game, but he would be genuinely unplayable if he had a mediocre nair. This move set's powering up Ganondorf a fair amount from the looks of it, so you don't need to keep this, but it's fine. Ganondorf's forward air though, now has him grip his trident part way up and swing it downward in front of him. It's sort of a replacement for his current forward air that makes it less situational, giving it more range and disjoint and better startup that allows for air-to-air -air combat. So it's essentially a big, dumb, arcing sword move, but with a trident instead. It makes a decent amount of sense. I think some of the success would come down to exactly how the trident is modeled. For this to work, to, for it to look like a club clobbering someone effectively, you probably need a pretty chunky model. It definitely conveys the power aspect of Ganondorf more than a uh, stab would, or God forbid, something like Byleth's slap. Honestly, this one's a little bit awkward, but you're in a rough spot here where you're committed to a weapon that's mainly used for thrust, so if you don't want to use it for a thrust, which I think on a power character you need to take that into account sometimes, it's probably about as good an option as you can get if you're committed to using the trident for the move. For the record, stuff like this is part of the reason I decided not to make Ganondorf a trident character when I was doing it. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely understand giving him a very distinctive iconic weapon but you know the physical embodiment of power and poke 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 those aren't necessarily going to gel a hundred percent of the time and this is kind of the first move i've seen where it really shows that off for me for his new back air ganondorf performs a one-handed stab behind him like a cross between his current back air and bylas it trades a slight amount of power and safety on shield for greater range and utility compared to bylas back air it comes out faster sits higher and has less range okay so stabbing back air it makes sense uh in terms of trying to buff Ganondorf, I get this, but Ganondorf, again, is the powerhouse character, right? Why is his back air faster and shorter ranged compared to Byleth? I would kind of instinctively think it should be the opposite. You know, like, eh, 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 that doesn't really do it for me, whereas that feels more like the king of evil, right? That feels like Ganondorf. Ganondorf's new up air isn't based on his current one. Instead, he spins his trident horizontally above himself for a full rotation. Oh, that's cool. One hit, but its range to either side is something else. This newfound juggling tool keeps opponents above him where they're more vulnerable, and eventually it starts to kill. Got a lot of end lag though, so you'd have to be smart about using it. Again, not necessarily the absolute strongest feeling move that Ganondorf would have, but frankly, that doesn't even really apply to his current up air, which I really hate hate the goofy animation on it makes no sense for him and it's a pretty cool clear-cut reference to an actual boss fight simplified sure just one spin and not any kind of aerial boost which you could potentially put in there to make it more interesting but i like it then ganondorf's down air get this has him grip his trident and throw it downward with so much force that it carries him with it a dive kick of sorts that moves slightly forward deals a ton of damage especially when he impacts the ground and causes an explosion and the very start of it can even spike However, it's slow even by Stalinfoss standards, relegating it to mix-ups or big reads. Save it for when no one's expecting it, though, and look out. Okay, so if we're keeping elements of Ganondorf's current moveset, I would personally advocate that his existing downer, that lightning stomp, is one of the ones that's kind of a sacred cow if you're going to have sacred cows, especially because Stalinfalls aren't exactly the most popular move category. To be fair, though, I gave Ganondorf a Stalinfall for his downer as well, a very small one that didn't actually travel that far and was still designed to invoke some semblance of his existing Dan Air because I just couldn't help myself, but I'm being a bit of a hypocrite here. Ganondorf's grab game also got some touch-ups, starting with a little help. His grab animations are the same, but now they're one frame faster. No! No, no wimpy grab, please! I know Ganondorf's not a grappler, but he doesn't need to hold his arm down that low, please. His pummel, though? Who needs to knee people when he can just press down harder on his opponent and blast them with dark lightning? That's a cool He's pummel. One of the strongest pummels in the entire game, though also one of the slowest. Ganondorf also got some new tricks for his throws. His forward throw now has him lob his victim forward and stab them twice with his trident. Sweet. And his second only to Mewtwo's forward throw and damage. 
His back throw is mostly unchanged, but now the kick is accompanied by dark magic and deals slightly more damage. I don't think I really like that one too much. Giving it some enhancement with dark lightning is cool, but Ganondorf's throws are an area that I always thought is a little bit boring compared to his source material. Now, personally, when I'm designing move sets, throws are often one of my opportunities to put in cool references that you couldn't necessarily sneak into the core move set. You can definitely make an argument that I go too far with it sometimes, but this one seems a bit too generic. His up throw is also similar, but now the uppercut is even more forceful, comes with a dark blast on hit and deals so much more knockback that it is now the strongest vertical kill throw in the game. Why doesn't he have a kill throw anyway? Yeah, I'm assuming it's because Flame Choke exists, but I don't really have a great answer for that. Ganondorf is supposed to be this powerhouse character where most of his throws are pretty wimpy. Lifting his opponent above his head is very much a Ganondorf thing, and then what does he do when they're up there? He punches them? Okay. Finally, tired of imitating Falcon for his down throw, now Ganondorf shoves his opponent onto the ground and stomps on them with one armored foot. Not only does it oh. do damage than before and look absolutely brutal, its combo utility is completely intact. Love it. Love it. That is a sick throw. Oh, that's way better than mine. I just had him do a more exaggerated throw. Ganondorf specials have been hit or miss in past games, but now we have a chance to make them a true threat. First up is his neutral special, and boy does this need some work. Warlock Punch's unparalleled power has always been held back by its extremely slow startup and surprisingly small hitbox. But now... We can do something about that and diverge it more from the Falcon Punch. Okay. On use, Ganondorf slowly pulls his trident behind him and spins it to gather dark magic into the spear tips. Once fully prepped, he stabs forward with tremendous force, unleashing a powerful dark explosion. A couple key changes help make it more usable. First, the hitbox is bigger now and reaches further. Second, it comes in two versions based on whether you tap or hold the B button. Okay. The former is much faster, faster than Falcon Punch even, but its power takes a hit, only about as strong as a smash attack. But when held, the level 2 version maintains the improved hitboxes while having nearly as much wind up in power as the move we all know and love. The newly christened Warlock's Wrath takes the old punch and gives it a much appreciated makeover. The level 1 charge is more viable in regular play, basically a slightly slower smash attack you can turn around to surprise people, while the held version offers something devastating if the situation calls for it. So on the existing base Ganondorf, I'm just a firm advocate for entirely getting rid of the Warlock Punch, but having a power move of some kind makes sense for him, and this is an interesting way to take it. I like the modular approach of you can use it for some legitimate utility, but if you feel like really just showing off you can as well. I can see using it like Marth's Shieldbreaker 2 going really far off stage and charging it up and just absolutely creaming someone. Now again we kind of run into the problem where it's got overlap with his forward tilt and forward smash and if you're doing it in the air his back air and kind of his forward air as well. I don't think you need to be married to the concept of this big slow neutral special. You can absolutely swap it out for something else but if we are deciding to honor the original legacy of Warlock Punch this is the kind of thing I'd like to see. I like the modular aspect. Next we have a side special and honestly Honestly, this one doesn't need an overhaul. Yeah, that's fair. The framework of Flame Choke is the same as before. It's an iconic move and an important part of Ganondorf's moveset as a command grab that sets up immediate tech chases. But I did add one thing to it. You can hold the B button down to charge this special too, and the second level of this one goes further and moves faster than the default. Oh, and uh, once the charge has hit a certain point, Ganondorf gains super armor for the rest of it until he's mostly finished moving, giving him a surprise mix-up that lets him tank an attack and retaliate with a grab. It's still punishable if it whiffs, and the charge version has more end lag, and it still puts him into freefall in midair. And the actual uh -huh. grab behaves the same regardless of the level of charge. I'll see what the rest of Ganondorf's recovery gets before I comment too much on Flame Choke putting him in freefall. I think that's wildly unnecessary on base Ganondorf. That aside though, I love this and we're seeing a bit of a modular theme here, which is something I also gave to Ganondorf in a very different way, but it's a really convenient method of letting him keep powerful moves while still giving him more utility. I love the deceptive nature of the armored command grab. It's really powerful, but it's also telegraphed. Personally, I didn't keep the Flame Choke and that's just because it's taken from a relatively obscure Twilight Princess reference and it just didn't really click with the core concept of my video where I pretended Ganondorf never existed at all. I needed to get rid of it for the sake of integrity, but in this kind of scenario, it's another sacred cow. It's gotta stay. Ganondorf's up special has always been kind of, eh. Fun when it hits, but iffy as an actual recovery and rarely an optimal punish. And is another remnant of Captain Falcon's moveset. But just like with Warlock's Wrath, we can take the framework and retool it into something new. On use, Ganondorf- Wait. Dark Ascent. And for Ganondorf's final special move, Dark Ascension, we have another modal teleport. This 
what the hell? I haven't seen this video. Okay, so Ganondorf's original move is Dark Dive, so maybe Delzathin was playing on that? I wasn't. As far as I'm aware, both of these are made up. I did reference Ganondorf's real move names when I was designing my own. There's a lot of, like, heaven and hell imagery in there, which I guess Delzathin probably did the same thing, but that's weird. It doesn't look good for me. I swear to God, I haven't seen this yet. Ganondorf rises upward with some control left and right like usual. This version, however, doesn't grab anyone in the way and cut the recovery short. Instead, it starts moving sooner at the beginning, goes a little further up than before, and looses a blast of dark magic at the end that covers himself and his immediate surroundings. Okay. But just like the previous two specials, you can hold this one for a second level of strength, and charging it trades a longer startup for greater height, better lateral control, and adds two new, smaller, but still usable, explosions on the way up. While it's still not the greatest recovery, Dark Ascent stands out better next to Falcon Dive and makes Ganondorf less of a sitting duck against strong edge guarders by using the optional charge to vary his timing and the level 2 version's extra hitboxes to stay safer. However, it's still a mainly vertical recovery on a character with poor airspeed, so getting hit out of it at the wrong time could still prove a serious problem. Okay, so his recovery did get at least a bit of a boost even outside of Flame Choke, that's fair. Personally, I'm not a big fan of giving the heavyweights bad recovery, so I think that's just a generally bad design philosophy. It's a weird dichotomy between casual and competitive, though. At a casual level, it's like, oh, well, they get sent flying less distance, but they also can't make it back as easily, so it balances out. But then in competitive, the fact that they don't get sent as far also means that they get comboed harder, so it doesn't actually balance out. I've done an entire video on this. Technically twice. Certainly if Ganondorf has a more well-defined stage presence and better airspeed, then a uh, bad recovery is more justified, and it's still been buffed overall. No float yet, interestingly enough. I don't think I've ever seen a fan move set that doesn't give him one. Let's see. Wizard's foot has always been a worse falcon kick, and now that our move set has an improved burst option via charged flame choke and a much better mid-range game, he doesn't need this as much anymore. Again, I took the opposite approach. I slowed Ganondorf down even more and gave him lots of good burst movement options, but totally valid. <laughs> Pulling from series lore and Ganondorf's tendency to get even tougher when he's close to defeat, once he's at 100% damage or greater, or under 40 HP in stamina matches, he can activate his down special to tap fully into the Triforce of Power, and unknowingly Demise's Curse, to become a dominating presence. Marked by an aura of malice and glimpses of Ganon's silhouette surrounding him, Ganondorf's true power That's cool. is unleashed. When in this state, his walk, run, and airspeed all gain a boost. A small one, but it's there. And all of his specials have new enhancements. You know how they've had two levels of charge? Well, in this state, the level two charge becomes the default when you tap the button, while holding it grants a new third level of charge with truly devastating effects. So I thought that we had both just independently come up with the modular specials concept because it was a convenient way to give Ganondorf the traits that we wanted him to have on a standalone basis, but there's an underlying through line running through all of this. I see. This is starting to come together now. Level 3 Flame Choke gains even more startup, but if Ganondorf grabs someone, he chokes them with malice instead of mere dark magic, forcing them into a crumpled state for guaranteed follow-ups with his jab, tilts, or dash attack. Level 3 Dark Ascent covers even more distance while shielding him with a sphere of malice the whole way that deals multiple hits to anyone who dares interfere. This is a comeback mechanic, which makes sense. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but that's just a total personal bias thing. I don't tend to love resource mechanics, and I avoid characters who have them whenever I can. Level 3 Warlock's Wrath has him throw the trident at the end like a javelin, turning it into a wickedly powerful projectile that creates a malice-fueled explosion the moment it hits something even if that something is a reflector. So he gets to throw the trident, that's cool, but if it's coming at the end of a warlock punch-esque charge time, that's a really slow projectile, right? Maybe have this be where he spins the trident during its throw as Ganon does in A Link to the Past and some other games. Have it spin horizontally rather than vertically, so at the very least it covers a lot of space. But this doesn't actually sound that good to me, and you're dedicating a special move to it. I haven't actually heard what Down Special does when he's not at 100% either. So increased movement stats are great, and some of these special upgrades seem really good. We'll see. A lot of uh, combat mechanics in Smash aren't that exaggerated. Sephiroth's one-wing form, for example, is kind of what the character is based around being able to do. Let's keep going, I'm not done yet. And if you press down and B again, Ganondorf gathers malice into one hand, plunges straight down, and slams into the ground or platform with so much force that it creates a massive shockwave. True power is a manually activated altered state, an install in fighting game terms, that turns Ganondorf into a real final boss when his back's against the wall. But tapping into such power comes with a cost. 
For one, he actually gets lighter in this form, making him easier to knock out than he would be normally. Interesting. This can be a real problem once the other drawback kicks in. Once eight seconds have passed, he begins to take damage over time as if he was poisoned, and his level three specials inflict further recoil damage. The more time passes, the more vulnerable and desperate he becomes, and unlike some installs, he cannot turn it off. He's stuck this way until he loses his stock, or gets healed back under 100%. What sounds like a simple comeback mechanic at first is actually a metaphorical deal with the devil that can and will blow up in your face if not used carefully. So what does down special do if you're not at 100%? Is that the ground slam thing? Okay, so yeah, in the comments he does clarify, if you try to activate true power when he's under 100%, it just fails. I think that needs another pass. I think it should absolutely have something to do under 100%. The entire concept of true power, okay, faster ground speed, faster air speed, those are fantastic. Those are great traits that does make your character a lot better. The third level charges are if I'm understanding this correctly, it's slower and stronger, but slower and stronger is usually a bad trade-off in Smash. It does make him definitely feel even more powerful in terms of pure raw force, but a lot of that doesn't necessarily even make him sound like a better character to me. Okay, let's take some liberties here and say that the third level charges are so incredibly good that they do turn Ganondorf into a substantially more powerful character when they're active. So in that scenario, you've got a faster Ganondorf with more powerful, cooler, flashier specials. That's all great. The price that you pay for that is being easier to kill and taking constant chip damage. That obviously really sucks. That's an incredibly harsh penalty, but you have to activate it yourself. I think the core concept of this works and it does feel appropriate for Ganondorf. There's a character called Wei Shan in Rushdown Revolt who does a similar thing. This kind of sacrifice your health for the sake of stronger moves thing. And obviously he's not the only character, but he's pretty direct comparable considering he's in a platform fighter and can trigger it voluntarily. If it is a state you want to be in most of the time, then giving up an entire special move just to trigger it sounds maybe a bit excessive. There is pinpoint timing involved with this, which I do get. You need to choose exactly when the cost of activating it is worth it. Is that necessarily in theme for Ganondorf though? Yes, when his back is against the wall, he unleashes his ultimate form, welcome to video games, but does he need to be pushed to a very specific little pinpoint moment to do that? Personally, I'm going to say that the nuance of exactly when you choose to go into this altered state, I don't think it's worth giving up a special move for. Because a lot of the time the decision isn't really that interesting, right? It's like, oh, I'm gonna die soon, just let me power up and go for a Hail Mary, hopefully I can cheese something out. Don't get me wrong, there absolutely would be situations, a lot of them even, where there would be a lot more nuance to this, but compared to a more standard special where there's nuance all the time with when exactly you use it. I'm going to say it's not worth the opportunity cost. I think if you just made this a more typical comeback mechanic and you said that after 100% damage, Ganondorf always has this active and you rearranged exactly what it did a bit, particularly the constantly ticking up health and the lighter weight thing, I think you still get the vast majority of that flavor. This kind of burning through my life force and sacrificing my body to power up thing. Did he even directly do that until Tears of the Kingdom came along? And if you're really fixated on leveraging your life to power up, which I think is a cool concept, you could maybe make down special more like a we Fit Trainer Sun Salutation thing where it saps your health instead of restoring it. There is definitely a theme with his other special moves. I totally get the concept of them having an extra charge form that can only be activated here. I think that just couple of levels of charge thing is a great standalone concept. It really doesn't need a gimmick. Armored Flame Choke is one of my favorite ideas I've ever heard for Ganondorf. The only other thing that I'd seriously advocate for here is maybe whenever Ganondorf is in this true power state, however you want to implement it, maybe let him float by holding a jump button down as well. It ties into that whole buffing his mobility theme. Everyone would expect to be able to see Ganondorf float. It would be a colossal boost to his power that would go alongside his special moves. It doesn't necessarily make a lot of canonical sense. Ganondorf doesn't need to be in any kind of final boss form to be able to do this in Zelda, but I think it plays into it pretty well. And even if you completely disagree with me, you love the health sacrifice aspect of this entire concept really clicks with you, which is totally fine, I would still say that unambiguously, under 100% damage, Dambi needs to do something. All that's left is Ganondorf's final smash. And while we don't need to change it thematically or mechanically, we can give his Ganon form the same visual overhaul. Instead of pulling specifically from Ocarina of Time or Twilight Princess, this version, just like Ganondorf himself, would incorporate elements from across his entire history of boss fights. A perfect version of Ganon with which to crush your foes utterly. I understand reverting him to Ocarina of Time Ganon, but I actually think that the Twilight Princess one was more thematically appropriate, and one that's a little bit more cohesive would be my preference too. He's still scary up close and prefers to force people into straight fights where he can overpower them and still weak to getting walled out. The latter was why I chose not to incorporate the crazier stuff I've seen, like using his famous reflectable magic to instantly turn games into tennis matches, but now he should be truer to character and less fundamentally flawed in any modes other than free-for-alls. Yeah, 
I assumed there was some kind of logic behind it like this. He made Ganondorf faster. He made his moves better. He still wants him to have the intrinsic weaknesses of a super heavyweight. That's fair. And I think you certainly do need to be careful with the Dead Man's Volley. A lot of fan movesets that I've seen over the years specifically talk about using it exactly like in Zelda, where there are these long, drawn-out sequences every single time he throws a projectile. I think that would lose the novelty and get really stale and tired and drag matches out really fast, frankly. But personally, I would advocate that it's by far Ganondorf and Ganon's most iconic attack pattern. It shows up constantly in Zelda games. And if you're taking the opportunity to rework him and not including the move that a lot of people would most recognize as the foundation of his canonical moveset, it seems like a wasted opportunity to me. Personally, in my moveset, I had these same kinds of concerns and I made it so that his up smash and his up air, which I converted into the Dead Man's Volley, are kind of mediocre projectiles. And if you get into a volley with them, Ganondorf is guaranteed to eventually win the volley after a few exchanges, so there's less incentive to do it constantly. So looking back on this as a whole, I like it. It was definitely made with the intention to maintain a lot of the feel of the original Ganondorf from Smash, and it does that. Exactly how much of that feel you want to maintain comes down to personal preference. Again, my approach is just scorched earth throw it all away, start again. This is the more realistic perspective, and I think it hits most of its targets. The real main sticking point for me is definitely that down special. I think what it led to, those chargeable specials that are being done with it in mind, kick ass. Again, a flame choke that you can charge to have armor. Oh my god, that's cool. And then put in the dead man's volley and put in the float. I know, I know, not everything needs to be a reference, and this is definitely my bias. I like characters being pretty canonically faithful, but assuming Smash 6 came out and Ganondorf did get a real true overhaul, which I'm not holding my breath for, for the record, but let's say it does happen and his moveset gets completely reworked and he still doesn't have a float and he still has no Dead Man's Volley, I think a lot of people would probably be pretty disappointed with that. But the core of this, yeah, I'm in. Next up we have And Yet No Bananas. I'm approaching this design as an artist and designer who also watches Fighter Theory. Hey, that's me. I'm also not a competitive player. Fair enough, that's the majority of the Smash player base. Right, so I'm taking a less is more approach to Ganon. Some of these designs change every move of his, but not only is this unnecessary, as plenty of his moves show off his raw power without coming off as a common Rider villain, but also it's resource intensive. This hypothetical redesign would be released alongside a hypothetical new game, so the more labor we can save for other characters, the better. Totally valid, and game development is just a massive series of trade-offs and cheats until you can get by, but personally if a couple DLC characters need to get the chopping block so they can totally rework Ganondorf, I'm going with it. They're not doing that just so we're clear. Extra characters matter so much more to so many more people. Let's start with the petty little additions and get to the more vital and wide sweeping changes later. Okay, top 10 list. Nice, easy format. I like it. First, and as promised, this is the pettiest thing I can think of and would only be implemented if we're just drowning in extra time, is a new down tilt. Like, there's nothing wrong with the current one. I, it's just, for lack of a better term, it's just unseemly for a dark god emperor to do a move like this? So once again, not nearly as unseemly as you'd think. This does kind of come up in the Wind Waker. Ganondorf does kick in his games. But a low back fist is actually pretty good. I included multiple back fists in my Ganondorf rework. It is definitely a thing he does. And this is kind of already what he does for his ledge attack. Also, this format of overlaying the animations on top, I love that. That's great. Ganondorf had a really awkward run cycle in Brawl in Smash 4. You can tell the guy can absolutely run faster, but he won't? Ultimate made him much more convincing, but you'd want to have him approach menacingly while being not at all that fast. I suggest you have him float evilly towards you. I was going to do this. I have this entire segment written up and recorded and I cut it. I really like it not only because, hey, Ocarina of Time's a good game, but also because if you're running slow, it kind of looks like you're struggling to move, whereas if you're floating slow, it looks like you don't care enough to move. I decided not to go with it because it makes the float mechanic that he actually does have more distinct. And also on top of that, in Tears of the Kingdom, which this video again predates, he runs and he runs pretty convincingly. Also, yes, both of these last two moves have animations taken from Magneto from Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, he just kind of got everything right on how you depict and play a villain the first time? Yeah, alright, fair enough, you got there first, doesn't mean you need to be the only one to get there. This is an effect that seems small but has a lot of implications on how he has to be designed. I'm changing his up hair because, it, well, it just seems janky to me. Yeah, I hate it. You can actually reuse the animation from the old up B, which is number 600, oh. for a slow but powerful swipe. 
Currently, Ganon relies on this heavily for spacing and protection from the air, and changing to a slow kill move would have a lot of implications on his design. Fortunately, all the changes later on means that he gains versatility, so he's not inherently weaker for not having this move anymore. Yeah, I can see that working pretty well. Definitely an upgrade to the bicycle kick, which is so out of place on Ganondorf. Easily one of his least appropriate moves. Maybe an upwards punch instead, an uppercut kind of thing, or like a really clearly defined iron claw. The main issue I have with the existing up special animation is it's just a bit too nonchalant of a swipe, but obviously it's just kind of being used as a reference point here. I actually want to revert his jab back to something similar to melee. To be honest, it's just find his melee jab amusing, like just one little love tap in and sends you flying, it's great. I think either approach is fine, his later jab definitely looks like he's putting more force behind it, which makes it feel stronger overall, but just his little bop that still looks like it's hitting you pretty hard sort of has his own story to tell, right? Personally, I'm in favor of the changes that they made, I just think that animations that feel like they hit hard are such a high priority in a fighting game, any game genre where it matters really, but I got no complaints. Down B is the first of what I call falconisms. Though I don't really mind this as much as the others, as charging through enemies is within the theme of the character, still, we can alter the animations to be something more appropriate to the theme, so I made him dash through head first as a pig shadow envelops him. It's like a mini version of his final smash. Beautiful. That's so good. I reworked his side special completely, and I had him also enveloped in the shape of a full charging bore in this case, as opposed to just the head. But taking a more conservative approach like this, I love it. It's mostly just a visual change, like he's in a different pose so it has some relevance relevance to gameplay, but for the most part, same moveset concept, just new particle effects and a new silhouette. But oh my god, this says so much about how animations matter in fighting games. What a huge upgrade off something so simple. Another one of the falconisms, up B. The new attack okay, is- Okay, teleport. But I didn't want him to be just another blinking from one place to another teleport, like many of the teleport up -bees. Instead, he'll fade in and out of shadow, intangible until he reaches his destination, like he does in many of his boss battles. Just something different would be appreciated, I think. Okay, so yep, very, very direct reference. It's extremely simple, which is kind of par for the course with Ganondorf. Again, he's a very straightforward, to the point fighter, intentionally so, and seeing a teleport show up in the moveset is warranted, and this would be a boost to his recovery because you couldn't intercept it in the middle. What I don't like about it, though, is that you're sacrificing power, right? I don't like his current up special. I hate that it's still a ripoff of Captain Falcon, but what I do like about it is that they decided to give it a huge power boost in Ultimate. It used to be pathetic weak and now it's actually a great kill move. I think if you're taking the teleport approach for up special that's totally fair but I want an explosion or a dark vortex or something in there to make sure that Ganondorf still feels like a power character. Ganondorf and Zelda can also be a very sneaky character and I'm okay with having some of that sneakiness come in. I gave him a sneaky teleport in my rework but keeping the core of ultimate Ganondorf as this just like pure raging power character and then he's just got this one little like whoop de wop thing. It feels a bit incongruous to me even though from a canonical perspective it actually makes way more sense than his existing up special. So a controversial change, I would like him to have a variant of Peach's float. I don't know how controversial that is, honestly. I like the posing for it though, not quite Ocarina's hand on hip thing, not the arms crossed that I've seen kind of doing its own thing, and the cheeky little pinky finger up too, very villainous. Not the version in PM, that one, I still don't know what's going on with that one, like that one's like, you tap B in midair, but also it's a reflector, and you don't just stay in the air, you just kind of slowly drop after half a second. I prefer making moves control stick agnostic if possible, because in a hectic battle it's easier to be set in a specific motion instead of returning the stick to neutral. But yeah, a float with the same input as speech, but not as long duration. Not just a boon for recovery, but also new tricks with aerials at neutral. Just want to be careful that he doesn't step on Peach's toes of air cancel moves too much. So the control stick agnostic thing, for a casual player, yeah that makes sense. I have no problem with the PM float personally, so the only thing is for the Peach float cancel stuff, do you necessarily know what you're signing up for? Because it's not necessarily intuitive for a more casual player, but just for the record, Peach Float Cancel is one of the most disgustingly broken tools in Smash history. It probably wouldn't be nearly as bad for Ganondorf just because his moves have less combo potential, but yeah, he could definitely abuse the hell out of that. When I did the float in my moveset, I put a startup animation on it so he couldn't instantly act out of it. I'll probably get backlash for this one too, because this is one again is better moves, but it is the last of the Falconisms, neutral air. There's just oh, too it's much neutral air. In 
there, which again is implying a characteristic that Ganon just doesn't have. What I designed here is very simple, a rotating back fist. I actually did a rotating back fist on mine as well. It was done for a pretty specific purpose though. It was to give Ganondorf a reflector in the air so you could play Dead Man's Volley with it. Small criticism with the animation here, I think it's too similar to Up Air. I was actually a bit confused at first. I was like, oh, they started out just overlaying Ganondorf's existing animation and then they also did a new one by hand. What was the purpose of that? And the other thing to take into account here is that if we're going down this path of barely tweaking Ganondorf and also getting rid of his neutral air just for this, reworked Ganondorf can get away without his existing neutral air. Slightly tweaked Ganondorf probably can't. He really needs that move. And for a character who can float in the air and is shown to do kicks in multiple games in the past, I don't think it's a horrible choice to have as far as melee attacks are concerned. As a standalone concept, I think it's actually good. I could totally see it being someone's neutral air, but I don't think it's a great fit here. Also, yes, I'm aware I'm replacing a lot of his moves with back fists. It's just a very good move for simultaneously displaying a medium amount of putting effort into things while showing disrespect for the thing you're putting effort into. Yeah, I agree. That's probably why Ganondorf does so much stuff like that. This was almost number one. I had to argue with myself whether oh, this up was tilt. worse for how simple it is to fix or with the actual number one for how deep the impact would be for changing it. Honestly, this might be a contender for the most awkward move in the game, and of course, I'm talking about up tilt. He sticks his leg way up like he's a ballerina before axe kicking it down with an explosion. And it's satisfying to land, don't get me wrong, but he has a move like this already. Volcano Kick is my least favorite move in the entire Smash franchise. I hate that thing. It looks stupid as hell. It's entirely redundant. Up tilts are often incredible tools and the kind of thing Ganondorf really needs help with. What I designed in this place is where he makes a grabbing motion into the air and a minor explosion of electricity bursts from it. Oh, electricity actually taken from Demise from Skyward Sword, Ganon's canonical predecessor. In his boss battle, after you whittle him down, he grabs a lightning bolt from out of the sky and his weapon becomes electrified for the rest of the fight. Yeah, I actually also designed my up tilt as a very, very blatant jump callout, and funny enough, my original design also used electricity as a direct reference to Demise. I really like this. It's hard to downgrade the volcano kick, but even with that very, very low bar, this is nice. I imagine this move actually functioning similar to his old up smash, the one in Smash for and brawl with a higher than normal windup but is shockingly safe on block. And of course the exact power and size of the move can be changed based on the needs of balance. This move doesn't have to be good in the grand scheme of up tilts, it just has to function. What's described here probably wouldn't be the absolute best up tilt in the game, but it seems pretty good at its purpose and again, it can't get worse. So the big one. The thing that, if I could change only one thing about him, ah, I there it is. like I said earlier, he doesn't need three super long wind-up moves, even if this move is legendary for being the strongest in the whole game. But what will Neutral B be now? Well, one of the core ideas around Ganondorf is that he is a warlock, and one thing that screams warlock more than anything else is magic projectiles. And after a long look through of his boss battles through the years, the single most recurring one and the most obvious to tack onto his moveset would be the good old tennis ball. However, this concept has several hurdles to consider before we just add it in. Mainly, there's already a projectile that can be reflected just by hitting it, so we need to ask how this will be different. Yeah, we're talking about DDD's Gordo here. I don't think that's necessarily a problem. Just the fact that one bounces versus the other not is already enough differentiator to me. First off, this attack can be charged, and at full charge it can be stored just like Samus or Mewtwo. Yeah, I like that. Maybe when it's charged up all the way, it turns into that split shot thing that Ganondorf does when he specifically charges up the Dead Man's Volley in Zelda. The other thing is that instead of a lot of knockback, it stuns you for a bit so that Ganon gets a chance to land <laughs> that works too. meaty attacks upon you. Also, when the projectile is active, Neutral B becomes a Reflect, just so you have a quicker option to tend the ball back if your own attacks are too slow. Yeah, it's a nice, simple, clean implementation. I like basically everything about it. Again, I would maybe put the safeguard of not being able to just rally back and forth indefinitely. I think that could get a little bit exhausting. Obviously, you wouldn't actually get into infinite rallies. That doesn't happen with the Gordos either, but still potentially a bit slow and degenerate too often if you don't put some kind of safeguard in place. And the only other thing is this doesn't leave him with the Warlock Punch or the Volcano Kick anymore, so he has no real ultra a big, slow, powerful move anymore. And if you're making the argument that this Ganondorf is supposed to be a tweak of the existing one and takes the original's history into account, especially among the casual player base, people could have a problem with that. But he still has forward smash, right? And you can argue that that's kind of become his new iconic big, slow move. Losing both the others is not an issue for me, for the record, but it definitely would be for some people. Yeah, I never said I can't put half a point onto my list. I'm actually keeping Warlock Punch, but not as a special move or even as a normal A attack. 
So like, Hunt? Sakurai is a massive fan of the King of Fighters series, right? He even said it's explicitly one of the inspirations for Smash. One infamous part of that series is that the motion inputs for special moves can get kind of insane. Oh, uh, okay, I think I know where this is going. I assure you, I have bad news for you. Most infamous of them all is a move that's affectionately known as the pretzel motion, performed by Geese Howard and his Rage and Stop. Facing to the right, the motion goes down left, right, down right, down, down left, left, down right. Simple, isn't it? All of this to say, if you can perform the pretzel motion and then press A, you'll get an easter egg in the form of Warlock Punch. A cool treat for old Ganon players, a reference to KOF fans, who I'm a part of, and a reward on Heal Break if you can complete the final task. It's... It I get it. It feels weird to me. Basically everything else in here is very conservative and nice and neat and it ties very cleanly into existing Smash design philosophy, just not as it exists on Ganondorf. And then you take this incredibly bare bones, fundamental, casual, friendly character and the most difficult motion input in the series just comes charging into him like a drunk elephant. An input that has absolutely nothing to do with Ganondorf and is just tangentially related to a series that Sakurai happens to like and has one representative in Smash. All just to trigger a move that barely does anything and has heavy overlap with his forward Smash. It doesn't seem very Smash-like to me. Which is okay if you're willing to go totally off the walls into very unrealistic territory, but it feels harsh compared to all the other just very well-considered clean design elements here. I would say just make it a taunt if you're going to go down that route, although personally I've seen taunt show up in several Ganondorf fan move sets that work like Warlock Punch or, you know, some kind of equivalent. Always seems just a bit unnecessary and kind of fan move set to me, which I've certainly been accused of myself, so don't get me wrong, I understand the temptation, but I think it would still clash less here. Having said that though, I really, really like this. Again, a couple other nitpicks, but the changes to down special, brilliant. Love the up tilt, very nice implementation of Deadman's volley. This is clearly a moveset that's made by someone who likes Ganondorf's existing kit a lot more than I do, but you're allowed to think that. And other than the new neutral error, which I really would advocate against unless you're willing to overhaul Ganondorf a lot more substantially, I think this is great. Alright, and then ending off with Fiber Optic Broad Bean. Welcome to Redesigning Smash, a series where we take a look at current Smash characters and give them a fresh coat of paint. This time, we're gonna be tackling the King of Evil, Ganondorf. <laughs> There are a few fundamental things that I want to change up, the first of which would be Ganondorf's main form of attack, which at the moment consists of him punching, kicking and grabbing the opponent. However, in his various incarnations across the Zelda franchise, Ganondorf is usually depicted using a weapon. Looking at this sword history, moveset, I know the conventional way of thinking would be to give him a sword like in Twilight Princess, or potentially even a dual blade setup like in Wind Waker, but I wanted to go with something a little bit different here. Specifically, he'd wield the trident, which was- Okay, another trident moveset, Ganon. that's cool. Means we get to do a direct comparison between two of them. In this moveset, Ganondorf would use a combination of trident attacks for long range and close quarters combat to get him out of tight spots. As for why I went with the trident over the sword, well, I do have a couple of reasons for that, but we'll get into those when we look at the specials. For now though, let's start off simple with the new jab. This would be a 3 hit attack, with two quick diagonal slashes of the trident, followed by a stab to knock the opponent back, like his basic combo in Hyrule Warriors. That sounds like a really good jab, 3 hit with a trident range. It doesn't really cover his weaknesses up close the same way as we've looked at, it's more building onto his strengths as more of a mid-range fighter, I'm assuming this is going to be. Also a very, very direct Hyrule Warriors reference that time, I'm wondering if this is going to be mostly inspired by it. His neutral air would have him spinning the trident around like in A Link to the Past, sort of akin to what Palutena does with her staff. That's pretty good. It's a very logical translation if we're going just all in on this Ganon's trident concept. Only other thing that I might say is it's lacking a bit of that power aspect again. And when you've heard me saying stuff like that, you may be thinking, well, how can that be? In the Legend of Zelda game, he's the Triforce of Power Holder, and it's directly taken out of the Legend of Zelda. A point that I've heard brought up in the past, which in some ways I actually agree with, is that even though the existing Ganondorf's moveset is not very canonically faithful, and y you know the issues, I brought them up before, it does actually convey the concept of power arguably even better than his canonical movesets do. Like, the Dead Man's Volley, very, very cool attack, a very iconic attack, but if you just thinking like, okay, this guy's the physical embodiment of power, then that is his most iconic ability isn't necessarily the thing that makes the most sense, right? So I'm not saying it's a bad choice. I do like it. And in my moveset, which was a multi-weapon moveset, I was a little more lenient with having to have every single move hit super hard too, because leaning too far in that direction causes his own problems, some of which existing Ganondorf has. It can be a difficult tightrope walk. This one is still potentially pretty well balanced, provided that a lot of the rest of the moveset plays into the power theme. But just because Ganondorf is canonically powerful in Zelda, that doesn't mean you can just rip a 
whole bunch of his moves out of his home series and stuff them onto a Smash moveset and actually necessarily embody what the character should feel like. Funny as that may sound. His forward air would be pretty simple as well, with him just swiping the trident outwards. So we're going back to Byleth again, are we? Again, that's just what you need to do now. I've gone on a long rant on this channel before about how much I don't like Byleth's forward air animation, so applying that to a character who's supposed to feel stronger, ah. Uh... Also, yeah, animation is hard. When I was designing my template originally, I had the vague notion in my head of maybe doing some rough animation work instead of just doing static images, and I toyed around with that for all of five minutes before I decided, nope, video needs to be done this year. Now, in Ganondorf's original moveset, one of his more faithful moves was his forward tilt, where he leans back and kicks the opponent. This resembles an attack that he used in the final boss fight of Twilight Princess, so it's actually one of the moves I'd keep for this redesign. I like keeping that kick on his normals, it is definitely one of his more recognizable attacks from his base moveset. You're in a bit of a weird spot here though, where your jab has substantially more range than the forward tilt does. You know what I mean? The jab is using the trident and the forward tilt is just a kick? I think you could swap the two, honestly. That would not be the first selectable multi-hit forward tilt in the game by any means, right? There's no real hard and fast rule, you can technically make any kind of move anything you want, but You've got a stubbier, presumably faster attack, and then you've got a very long reaching attack. To me, it feels way more natural to move them around. It still have the jab send out like a very harsh low angle, you know, maybe speed it up a bit and then bring its power down a bit so it's a little more in line with other jabs because Ganondorf does need something in close quarters. It just feels like a more natural fit, at least to my eyes. One other move from his original kit that's actually pretty derivative of his in-franchise appearances is his side special, the Flame Choke. This involves them charging towards the opponent, grabbing them by their throat and slamming them into the ground, or just plummeting with them to their death if used in midair. The latter aspects of this move is similar to the ground pound attack he uses in Ocarina of Time, which I reckon would make for a nice new down air, but what about the actual choke itself? Ganondorf has been seen to use this technique in a couple of cutscenes from Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, so I thought it would be fitting to bring it back in some form since, spoiler alert, it's no longer going to be used for a side special. The oh, way cool. to do this is by reusing the flame choke as a new grab animation, where Ganondorf would hold the opponent by their throat in midair, a level of disrespect most befitting for the King of Evil. Okay, down here, I made that comment already, I think if you're going to keep some of his moveset, that's sort of a sacred cow. Flame choke I would honestly call a bit of a sacred cow too, in this particular concept where it's not reworking Ganondorf from the ground up, but I actually did this exact same thing for my moveset. I translated the flame choke into a dash grab animation, and then his distinctive grab was, yeah, that exact thing where he holds an opponent up above his head. So obviously, I really like it. The only thing is, if you're working with the real Ganondorf getting tweaked instead of a hypothetical scenario where he never existed, you'd better make sure whatever you replace the flame choke with is really damn fun. It looks like it could be, though. We'll see. Then you've got the smash attacks. For his forward smash, Ganondorf would use a powerful trident thrust, which would be a relatively slow but equally heavy hitting attack. It would also have lightning elemental properties, as seen in Hyrule Warriors. Oh, okay. So this is basically just what I proposed for Delta then. Makes a lot of sense, especially because there's a pretty heavy Hyrule Warriors emphasis creeping in here, which is fair, that game has really cool movesets. And you don't really have nearly the same overlap with his jab or forward tilt I would still advocate for, because it's a multi-hit. His down smash would be his fastest smash attack, and would see him spinning the trident around at his feet, thus being able to cover both sides. Oh, okay, so we're just straight up putting projectile tosses into the core moveset here. Would it be good or would it be bad. I'm assuming it would take a lot of time to complete because if that animation was done too quickly it would be odd looking. I think it would be really cool if it was a multi-hit where if you grabbed your opponent at any point where the trident was spinning around you, they stayed stuck until the very end. Take them for a ride. Last but not least, you've got the up smash. For this one, he'd summon a ball of lightning and dark magic above his head and honestly... I'm thinking that this one should just be really powerful, like unnecessarily so. We're talking Lucas tier here. Yeah, this is more or less what I did too. I did some nuance differences. I made it so that it didn't start out this big, but you could charge it to get bigger. But it seems really fitting, and I'm guessing this is supposed to be sort of the warlock punch replacement this time around. One thing that a lot of the characters in this game have in common is a projectile reflector. In the majority of cases, these take the form of a down special, or in some cases, a smash attack like with Ness and Min Min. The idea I have in mind for Ganondorf, however, is a little bit different. You see, in Ocarina of Time, he was able to reflect projectiles back at Link by using his cape, and I wanted to incorporate this into his moveset. So, here's what I'm thinking. 
for Ganondorf shielding animation, he'd hold his cape in front of himself, and upon releasing the shield, ah. he'd flick it outwards. This means that if the player were to parry a projectile by releasing the shield button just as the attack makes contact, they'd be able to reflect it back at their opponent. Yeah, I've heard this kind of thing brought up before. Uh, potentially pretty powerful because against the zoner, a lot of the time what you're doing is running and shielding in anticipation of the projectile being launched anyway, so it's a very, very quick release. But your timing would need to be really good, and it kind of turns out that slow, heavy, strong characters, giving them a reflector is not enough to stop them from being projectile camped, so it's fair, and it means you don't need to take up any precious real estate with a special move to implement something like this. Yeah, it works. While I do think it would be pretty incredible to see Ganondorf menacingly floating around the battlefield at yes. all, I don't want to just straight up give him the ability to do ah. so, but more on this later. The other ways it could be used are in his roll dodge animation as well as his dash. Rather than running along like he does currently, I think having him float along instead would be so much cooler. I reckon yeah. it would look a lot more intimidating and fits nicely with the rest of his new moves. This could be complemented by a new dash attack, which would have Ganondorf charging towards the opponent to perform an elbow strike. This would carry on the momentum of the dash nicely, while simultaneously pulling another subtle reference from the Twilight Princess fight. The Twilight Princess move, and I think it's definitely one of his better known, more recognizable moves from that boss fight, is a leaping elbow strike into a slash. But trying to make a multi-hit connect reliably with those kinds of shifting hurt boxes and high momentum, being able to hit your opponent at any point throughout the charge forward, eh, seemed like a bit of a tough sell. Ganondorf's new neutral special is a no-brainer, right? I can think of no better move for the job than a signature dead man's volley. Yeah, this is what most people do. ...the attack using his trident with a similar animation to how Phantom Ganon does it in Ocarina of Time. It would act as an energy-based projectile and would be fairly slow moving to begin with, but equally strong at the same time. Here's the interesting part though. The main mechanic that makes the Dead Man's Volley so iconic in the Zelda games is its ability to be reflected by Link's sword, essentially resulting in a sudden death tennis match. I think this would be a really fun concept to carry across into Smash, and it would work in a similar fashion to the Gordos that King DDD throws out, in the sense that the projectile could be reflected back by using any attack if timed correctly. With each consecutive reflection, the ball of energy would get both faster and stronger, thus making it harder to correctly time a counter-attack. Similarly to Corrin's neutral special, getting hit by this attack would cause a stun effect, and of course, the more times it's been reflected, the longer the stun duration would be. Yep, such a natural choice. A lot of people don't really like the Warlock Punch, and a lot of people really want to see Dead Man's Volley, and neutral specials are often where you put reflectors in Smash, it just fits so well. We saw in Yet No Bananas do this, most of the movesets that I've read over the years have done this, when Zeltic was on for my giving every Smash character a new move over on the main channel, he did this. Implementation is good here, pretty similar to Bananas. A little more canonically faithful, it trades off the being able to store the charge thing in exchange for making it go faster and stronger with each hit. Probably a bit weaker as a result, being able to charge and then store a projectile is a big deal. It's the reason why something like Greninja's Water Shuriken may be a very good move, but it's not super scary. I don't think either of those approaches is necessarily better, it's just a matter of tuning. In the fight against Ganon in A Link to the Past, he seemed to throw out the trident, causing it to spin around before charging towards it, shrouded by dark magic. Ganondorf uses a similar technique in Hyrule Warriors, and I think it would make a perfect fit for a new side special. This is the cool. The initial throw of the trident wouldn't cause much damage, with the spinning acting as a relatively quick, multi-hitting attack. As with Ivysaur's Razor Leaf, the distance thrown could also be altered. Doing a standard side B input would perform a shorter throw, whereas doing it with a smash stick input would cause Ganondorf to throw the trident out further. The charge after the throw would also be pretty quick, and would have decent KO potential as well. However, the opponent would be able to telegraph it early and play around it thanks to the trident throw giving it away. Luckily, since the dead man's volley would be able to stun the opponent and keep them in place, this would provide a good opportunity to use this move and score a kill, so it all balances out. Yeah, this does seem like a fun move. Not necessarily more fun than Flame Choke would be my only major complaint here, but it does sound like it would be flashy, it would be fun to hit people with, it's a better recovery. Please say that he can act after he uses this, but even if he couldn't, it would still go way further than the Flame Choke and would protect him with a hitbox in front of him. You could even explore other mechanics, make it so that if Ganondorf snares someone in the trident, 
can't throw when he is going to reappear into them you can hold down grab or attack or special and do different kinds of actions you know what i mean maybe if you do nothing that's when you dash in and just bash them away but if you're holding special then you dash in and you grab them and go into a flame choke like state maybe his default is he doesn't rush in at all and it's just a projectile and then if you're holding the attack button down he rushes in for the bash and the special he rushes in for the grab or other directions too this is just where my brain went immediately when i heard about this concept you don't need to be doing any of this stuff necessarily there is again a very strong argument for just keeping ganondorf very simple and straightforward and not giving him that kind of stuff to do is actually way more canonically accurate to ganon but if you just really wanted to go all in and have throwing a trident be a massive part of what ganondorf does which is fair he does that a lot in the boss fights there are a lot of things you could potentially put onto this framework but even if you just kept the framework it's a really cool side special i do like the synergy with the dead man's volley too again it would just give you more options if you connected with a max range dead man's volley and you could rush in and choose a few things to do let's talk about the new up special we'll have in this new kit this would be a rising slash with ganondorf leaping up into the air and performing a continuous series of diagonal trident attacks as far as recoveries go this one would be pretty basic providing decent vertical distance with the player being able to alter the angle slightly using the control stick However, there's a bit more to this move than it would first appear, and that's actually the case for all of these new specials. Before we move on here, this edit here with the lens of truth, that's really clever. Ganondorf's down special is something that I thought about for a while. What I've settled on isn't actually an attack that he uses in the Zelda game, so you could say this one is a fiber optic broadbean original. I call it the Triforce of Power. This move would involve Ganondorf taking a defensive stance, and each time he's hit one in this state, the Triforce would charge up. Okay, so a counter. I wasn't expecting to see one of these today, or maybe more along the lines of the Rebel's Gauge or Revenge. Interesting. It would take three hits to reach full charge, because, you know, Triforce 3. <laughs> That's a lot. The Triforce of power on Ganondorf's hand to start glowing. There'd probably also be some kind of indicator on the HUD for this, right next to his icon. Fully charging this move would enhance all of his special for one use, similarly to Cloud's Limit Break, and would also grant him the ability to float around freely like I mentioned earlier. Okay. Now, with the upgraded neutral special, the Dead Man's Volley would become the souped-up version of the move seen in Ocarina of Time, which is bigger, stronger, and scatters into multiple beams. Unlike the regular form of the attack, this enhanced special could only be hit back at Ganondorf using a dedicated reflector. Not just any attack would cut it. The side special would receive a power boost, with Ganondorf enshrouding his fist in dark magic before charging towards the opponent, while his up special would gain an additional stage, where he'd throw the trident down towards the ground and teleport towards it. That just leaves the down special, which would become a much stronger version of the ground pound attack used for his down air. If used on the ground, Ganondorf would leap up into the air before performing the attack, and this would create powerful shockwaves around him, like in Ocarina of Time. Okay, so we've got two trident fighters with two different power-up states here. I definitely prefer the activation condition of this one, it gives the player more agency to activate it as opposed to just passively waiting until you're over 100%. And it always gives down special something to do, which I appreciate. How much are you getting for this, though? Okay, so the ability to float is obviously colossal. In fact, it's so good that it's creating a lot of temptation to maybe stay in that form. You'd see Cloud Banes do that in Smash 4 sometimes. Their limit gauge didn't expire in that game. So sometimes what they would do is they would just get limit, which buffs his movement stats, and they just hold it. I think if you're going to make this work, you probably need to put a timer on it similar to what Cloud's Limit Gauge has an ultimate, because otherwise I think I'm just choosing the float, because this here, the giant dead man's volley, it's a really good projectile, not as good as being able to float, side special power boost is cool, probably not as good as being able to float, and then up special being able to throw something sounds good, not as good as being able to float, and then the ground pound down special you get, sounds good, <laughs> it doesn't sound as good as being able to float. Then again, the payoff that you get has to be really high because three charges is a lot. This is a video with essentially no numbers in it, which is totally fine for the record. I considered taking that approach myself. Most people really don't care, but I think if you were going to make this work, you need to be pretty generous with the frame data and let Ganondorf get some kind of benefit beyond just not being sent flying for managing to successfully soak something up. Incineroar is probably the closest point of comparison here with his revenge, right? So him activating revenge three times throughout a match is not that unrealistic. In fact, it's completely realistic. Some of the reasons it's so reliable are because it works on projectiles in addition to melee attacks, which it sounds like this does too, and it's frame three and doesn't cause Incineroar to stall in the air the same way that most counters do. So you'd probably need similar considerations here. Not necessarily exactly those solutions, but something in that ballpark. The thing about Incineroar is he doesn't need to activate multiple stacks of revenge. Only one is very, very good, and if he gets three, it just becomes insane. A huge change between 
between the two of these is if Incineroar whiffs while Revenge is active, he keeps Revenge. Whereas this one, it sounds more like Cloud's Limit where you need to just blow it all in one go. But Incineroar also doesn't get movement buffs or any core moves that changes. I can get behind it. I can see this being an incredibly difficult move to tune successfully. The activation requirement is so high that it needs to give you a ridiculous power surge when you pull it off and people don't necessarily tend to like ridiculous power surges in Smash a lot of the time. But I can definitely see it being fun as well. I like the upgraded specials. It gives a little bit of that sneaky aspect to Ganondorf that I've talked about. Tough but doable. Yeah, this was fun. As I expected, all three of these movesets that I looked at were more conservative than what I went with for my video, but that's totally fair. It really does just come down to exactly what you want to see. And obviously I had some notes here and there. This wouldn't be much of a video if I'm just nodding my head in agreement at everything. But overall, I think they all work. Big thanks to the creators here for letting me use their stuff. I've got them all linked below. Fiber Optic Broadbean and Delzathin both have entire series like this going over character reworks and new characters. And yet No Bananas is more of an animation channel than a Smash channel, as you may expect, given that they had by far the most effort put into illustrating the changes. Be sure to check them all out. Check out my Ganondorf moveset if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, Patreon, YouTube member, you know the drill.